If we have a tangent function in the right hand side of our second order linear differential equation, we can not use the method of undetermined coefficients anymore. We can use variation parameters though, as you will see in this video. And you will also see that we already get a nasty integral in this relatively easy example. So that's the example pi double plus y equals tangent of x, and we, we stick x to be between 0 and pi over 2. Uh, tangent of x has the problem, of course, if x would pass pi over 2, because then the tangent will blow up. Um, <coughs> first, we solve the complementary equation, uh, y double plus y equals 0, so you get uh, y complementary a linear combination of y1 and y2. You know how to do this, you get y1 sine of x and y2 cosine of x. Okay. No problems whatsoever till here. But then we want to find a particular solution. Well, we cannot use the method of determined coefficients, so let's try uh, the method of variation of parameters. So we put our protector equals u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2, where y1 equals the sine of x and y2, the cosine of x. Now we differentiate, so we get u1 prime sine x plus u1 times derivative of sine equals cosine, plus u2 prime cosine x, uh, plus u2 times the derivative of the cosine was minus sine. And then our first condition would be to set the terms with the u1 prime and the u2 prime equal to zero. So that's this part, equals to zero. Which means that for our bar particular prime, we are left with this term and that term. So if you compute a bar particular double, uh, we get the u1 prime cosine, and with the product rule, derivative of cosine equals minus sine, so minus u1 times sine, uh, minus u2 prime sine, and uh, minus u2 prime times the derivative of sine equals cosine. So there we have our, our particular double. Substitute in the differential equation, so we have y double plus uh, y. Uh, we see uh, that sometimes terms drop out, this term cancels out with this one and that one cancels out uh, uh, with that one. So we are have only left u1 prime cosine x minus u2 prime sine x equals right hand side equals the tangent of x. Well, we can summarize these two conditions into a matrix equation. Uh, the first one has uh, sine x times u1 prime plus cosine x times u2 prime equals zero, that's this one. And the second has uh, u1 prime cosine x minus u2 prime sine x equals tangent x equals this one. Now why do we want to write it like this? Well, we want uh, to have to solve for u1 prime and u2 prime. So we can do that by using the inverse matrix. Then we get u1 prime, u2 prime, invert the matrix with the sines and the cosines, determinant equals minus 1 equals uh, 0 tangent x. So we can solve for u1 prime. We see u1 prime equals uh, uh, 0 times sine x minus cosine x times tangent x. And that's nice because tangent equals sine over cosine, so uh, cosine drops out. So you have a u1 prime over here. u2 prime becomes slightly more difficult. Then you get uh, 0 times minus the cosine plus sine times the tangent of x. So uh, you have the minus sine and the sine squared x over cosine x. You can simplify slightly because sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So I left with a cosine squared minus 1 over cosine. So uh, cosine squared over cosine equals a cosine, but you still have this nasty 1 over cosine. Uh, so you see you can easily solve the, uh, the, the differential equation for u1 prime. u1 prime equals sine x, uh, but the integral in the u2 prime is slightly more complicated. Not the cosine x, but the 1 over cosine x is a problem, of course. We can solve for the u1 directly. So you just integrate the sine, you get the minus cosine x. Uh, you do not need a constant of integration here, because if you would integrate a c, uh, it would just boil down to adding a c times y1 of x, which is fine because it's part of the uh, homogeneous equation, but you do not need it for the particular equation. And then you also integrate u2. Uh, the equation for u2 prime with respect to x, so you get u2, this is equals the cosine of x, and the other integral is non not so trivial, we just leave it for, uh, for a moment, we'll come back to it on the last slide. 
uh, we now want to go on to uh, find out what the particular solution is. So we get uh, u1 times y1 over here plus u2 times y2 over there. And you see that works out very nicely because you get minus cosine x times sine x plus sine x times cosine x. So these factors cancel out and you are only left with a minus cosine x times the logarithm for your particular solution uh, plus your homogeneous equation. So uh, for, the, for the big fans of integrals, how did we integrate this 1 over cosine x? We have our solution now, but if you want to know how we did the integral of the 1 over cosine x, we have a very neat trick for that. Uh, you multiply it by cosine over cosine. So why would you do that? Then you turn the cosine squared x into 1 minus, uh, into one minus sine squared x, and then you can use the substitution rule u equals sine x. So you get an integral of um, 1 over 1 minus u squared. You separate this fr fraction in 1 half over 1 minus u plus 1 half over 1 plus u. You get two logarithms, the minus and then 1 minus u plus the and then of 1 plus u. You can combine the logarithms into a, a 1 half 1 plus u over 1 minus u u of sine x, so 1 half ln 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x, that's done over here. And then one final trick to get the, to the final example, uh, to the final answer, you multiply by 1 plus sine x in numerator and denominator. So what happens in the numerator, I if you bring it in the power 1 half, you just have 1 plus sine x squared to the power 1 half, so 1 plus sine x, and in the denominator you get 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared to the power 1 half equals the cosine x. So that is how you did this uh, nasty integral. You see, I the method of variation of parameters works nicely for all the uh, for nasty right-hand sides. However, you can still encounter quite difficult integrals in this method.